Welcome back to DEI Matters Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. And I am so excited today to have Cooper Katzman with us, who's a rising 12th grader at Arlington High School, um, who has this amazing story that I want him to share with us today. Cooper, thank you for being here today. Thank How you are for you? having me. Um, I'm doing great. Good. I'm very excited to be here. Good. So I want you to share your amazing story of um, you doing this 275 mile <laughs> hike um, mm -hmm. that you raised money for the anti um, oh, demo League. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, so the Long Trail is a trail that starts at the border of Vermont and Canada, and it goes all the way to the Massachusetts and Vermont um, border. And like you said, it's 275 miles. And I've done it one time before, and this time I was trying to do it a little bit faster. And I had the idea with this platform, I thought I could use to raise money for a cause that affects me personally. Mm -hmm. And I thought the Anti-Defamation League has a very good overall message, and they're a nationwide organization that really spreads a lot of positive and a very good message. And I really liked, um, I really thought that it was a good idea to sort of take initiative and raise money for them. And I think it was a very, uh, it was very impactful for me. And I think it was a great experience. And I really think I, it was great to inspire so many people and have so much support. And I got a lot more support than I initially thought. Mm -hmm. And it was just overall a great experience. And I'm very glad I was able to share it with so many people. That's, that's wonderful. Can you tell, tell me what led you to choose the Long Trail in Vermont uh, for so your journey? I, like I said, I had done it one time before. Mm -hmm. And I've grown up, like my dad is a very, has been in like the outdoor community for a long time. And mm -hmm. I've grown up in this community. And so over the past couple of years, I've been doing a lot of smaller hikes and I had done a little small section of it before. And a couple of years ago, two years ago, I had done the whole thing with my cousin. And so this trail has really, I've grown up doing this trail mm -hmm. and hiking around Vermont. So it felt like a very meaningful trail and a very meaningful um, area of the, like part of the world to hike in, so. So take me back a little bit. Mm -hmm. You make this decision to do this, this hike when did you make the decision? Like, how did you start prepping for it? I know you just said that you did more smaller mm -hmm. trails, mm -hmm. um, but what what gave you this idea? Like, this is what I want to do to raise this money for this great cause. I mean, initially it just started with me and my mom having a small conversation because I had planned to do this hike um, probably about a year in advance. Mm -hmm. And me and my mom or my mom and I had had um, a small conversation about maybe raising some money because a lot of people who I've known who have done this trail before have also raised money and raised awareness for other causes. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was a platform I could use. And um, I think me, my mom and I were having a small conversation and she was just like, oh, the Anti-Defamation League is a very big um, nationwide organization that you can raise money for. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that sounds great. And it sort of started as a small thing and then we sort of, I co got in contact with a few people at the organization and they sort of helped me um, really make it more, like create my message mm -hmm. and help raise money and set up a portal to raise money for it, so. That's right. So 275 miles, how long does that take you? Um, it, it takes, many people do it every year. Mm -hmm. It takes people from four days who do it the fastest to 30 plus days mm -hmm. and my goal, I had done it before in about two weeks, mm -hmm. and this time I, my goal was to do it in, in about eight days. Mm -hmm. And th it was ended up being about 30 miles a day, so it was definitely a difficult mm -hmm. um, physical task, but also it was more of a mental task. Mm -hmm. I was walking about 16 to 17 hours a day. I was tired. I was getting decent sleep, but also it was just... It was just hard to be out there by myself. I had mm -hmm. my dad out there who was supporting me the whole mm -hmm. time, which was great. Mm -hmm. And also he was showing me message. I was getting messages from all these people mm -hmm. w with support. People I didn't even know were supporting me and supporting my cause, which was amazing, so. Do you know how many, like, 
um, steps you had tracked 30, I, 30 miles a day? I don't exactly know how many steps, but it was it was definitely a lot. Yes. It was probably meant thousands and thousands yes. of steps. So You mentioned something about the mental aspect of that. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit more when you say the mental aspect of walking 30 miles mm -hmm. a day? So the mental aspect, I mean, I was by myself for probably 14, 15 hours a day just walking. And a lot of those days it was raining, I was cold, I was wet, I was uncomfortable. And there is every single day, many times a day, I just wanted to quit. Mm. And it was just struggling in like, my inner self struggling with myself mm -hmm. and trying to overcome that want and desire to quit mm -hmm. and just keep pushing forward. And really the biggest thing was people supporting me. Other mm -hmm. people, there are people who came out to the trail to support me. My dad supported me. I got messages from people just caring messages who were just, I don't think I could have done it without them. And there would have been no way for me to keep pushing forward if they didn't support me. You said some of the difficulties that you had was it was raining, mm -hmm. it was cold, you want to give up. You said sometimes mm -hmm. sleep was good, the sleep wasn't as good. Mm -hmm. Were there other difficulties that you had when you were doing the trail? Um, I mean, physically it was definitely challenging. Um, my Like I was tired a lot, my legs definitely hurt, but I think I was overall in good shape. Mm -hmm. I was able to physically do it, but I think definitely the mental challenges and I, I was able to actually walk and hike with my dad for a decent, maybe a couple miles a day. Mm -hmm. And we were able to have good conversations and just even having conversations about silly little things mm -hmm. that didn't even matter. Just talking to someone mm -hmm. else was great. And that really helped me keep going forward. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I'm thinking about is, I know I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm wondering how your mom was feeling that your dad's out there, you're mm -hmm. out there. It took you all about eight days. Mm -hmm. um, so what was that communication with your mom like mm -hmm. um, as you were doing those eight days? Well, I think my mom definitely was a little concerned, but she knows, she knew that I was able to do this. She'd seen me go out and do other things similar to this. She knows other people were doing this. And I think having my dad out there supporting me helped made her feel a little bit better about it but even he said I mean I was in pain a lot I was uncomfortable mm -hmm. and he could see that and it's it was hard for him to see mm -hmm. me in such pain and mm -hmm. such uncomfort and discomfort um, and there are a couple times where he told me just you don't have to keep doing this you don't have to keep going but he knew that it wasn't necessarily his place to make me quit or like make me stop but he definitely knew that or he and deep down inside of him he knew it was it was hard for him to watch me struggle like that but it also was a great experience for me after the fact I think yeah how did you feel once you got to the end like what was that feeling can you tell us that feeling that you the felt? feeling so the last three I think I finished the trail at about midnight and my dad and I actually got to walk and hike the last 14 miles together which was really nice and those last Two miles before we got to the end, it was the entire trail was just one puddle. It was just mm. flooded. Um, and I think probably about two miles from the end, I just stopped talking. Mm. And I kind of got into this zone, got into the flow. And um, it, I described it to my dad and a lot of people. It felt like the strength and power from everyone else who had like been walking that trail and who had mm. done that trail was like coursing through mm -hmm. me and mm -hmm. I really felt it was a very powerful moment and mm -hmm. when I finished it was just this sense of relief came mm -hmm. over me that I was finally done but when you get to the end there's actually a three mile hike down that you have to do oh my goodness so they like they kind of trick you they're like oh you finished but I still had to hike down three miles but mm -hmm. I got to the car I slept all the way home I got home I slept for probably 15 hours and mm -hmm. then I I was just got to relax so it yeah. was a great feeling to finish that's amazing can I ask, I, I should have asked you this before. So what kind of like gear do you have as you're doing this hike? Um, so it sort of varied for me. A lot of people will hike with um, a big backpack. Mm -hmm. And I started the first three days carrying all my stuff. Mm -hmm. And eventually I switched over to just carrying a small little pack with like water and food. So mm -hmm. I would meet my dad at all these roads mm -hmm. and he would just give me more supplies. Got so it. I didn't have to carry too much. But a lot of people, everyone who's doing this without a support crew, I was very lucky to have my dad 
um, out there and supporting me every step of the way. And a lot of people have to carry all their own stuff. So right. I was very fortunate. So were there any times during those intervals that you caught up with your dad? Did you like, you know, change boots? Change socks. Yeah, I was able to change socks a lot. My biggest problem was blisters on my feet, so that was probably the biggest obstacle. Mm -hmm. I had pretty bad blisters on my pinky mm -hmm. toes, and so that was definitely just constant discomfort. Mm -hmm. And I would change socks and I'd tape them, but nothing mm -hmm. really helped that much. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of just do as much as I could, but also have to push through the pain and discomfort. I have to ask this question. Mm -hmm. You planning on doing that again? I mean, when I was on the trail, like there were many times that I was like, I'm never coming, I'm never coming outside <laughs> ever again. I'm never coming outside. But after I finished that, there was a guy out there who got the fastest known time while I was out there. Mm -hmm. And people like that inspired, like I was talking to my dad maybe a day after I was like, oh, I think I can go out okay, there and get again. the fastest time. I think I can do it faster. So when you're out there, it's a, it's a inner struggle. It's an inner battle. But everyone most people get off the trail and they wish they were back on in a couple of days so one of the questions i have for you um you did this during the school year um i actually started a couple of days after so okay. i started i think june 26th okay. which was a few days after school mm -hmm. um and i actually got to celebrate my 17th birthday on the trail which was really cool oh. so my dad and i were able to i slept in the van and it was um, a couple of days before the 4th of July, but mm -hmm. this town, Stowe in Vermont, was mm -hmm. doing their 4th of July fireworks. So I got to see fireworks on my birthday, oh, which amazing. was really cool. So it was a special moment. Great. So what's, what's for the future, Cooper? Uh, I mean, I think the future, there's a lot, of, a lot of other trails, a lot of outdoor places I can go. Uh, I think this trail is definitely a special, special memory for me, and I think I'll definitely go back. But... There's many other things, the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, which are 2,000 plus miles each. Both definitely are intriguing to me, but I think I have to build up a little bit more. Um, I think a lot of it is as I mature and grow older, um, my mental strength is definitely increased. Mm -hmm. And it's less about the physical and more about being able to deal with challenges and not getting overly upset and handling my emotions very well. So. I, I like how you said that this experience has helped you to understand you, you've gotten resiliency. Mm -hmm. You've learned how to um, pass through that difficulty of mm -hmm. wanting to give up. And I think that that's a great message to your peers. That's a great mm -hmm. message to me and to, to the adults of the world that things do sometimes are difficult. But if we continue that, there's there's hope on the other side. Mm -hmm. Your your goal was to raise sixteen hundred, eighteen hundred, eighteen hundred, yeah. and I think you raised six over six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. What was that feeling like that you had you had this one girl goal, but you surpassed the goal? Mm -hmm. Like, what was your thoughts in regards to as you said, people supporting you? What does what 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 does that feel like mm -hmm. that you had these people? Um, in the world that are like this is great we mm -hmm. want to support you and not only support you in encouraging words but we want to support you monetarily mm -hmm. um i mean i think the support was honestly one of the main reasons i was able to do this and i think the money was def like in the first couple hours people were don't i think i had surpassed my goal which was amazing and just having so many people showing support some people didn't necessarily donate but some people would send messages and send support so the money obviously was an amazing i reached an amazing amount of money raised but i think people supported in many other ways than just that and i think it was just it's great to see so many people be inspired by what i did and it definitely makes me want to continue down that path of inspiring people with my actions and words great before we started the segment, um, you and I were having a conversation and you were saying that there are some colleges that you are interested in. Mm -hmm. And um, I was saying that this might be a great way, you know, how we have to mm -hmm. tell our story to the colleges. Mm -hmm. um, is this a story that you would be sharing in your, um, in your entry? Mm -hmm. I think definitely, yeah, this is probably one of the most impactful moments of my life. I've definitely gained a lot of knowledge, wisdom. I've gained a 
like a lot of support obviously um and i think this is definitely something i want to share i've been able to share with so many people and i think like you said an entry level essay or whatever i would be mm -hmm. i'd like to share this with as many people as i can reach so i think mm -hmm. definitely i'd like to share this as much as i can what what are your peers thinking about what you did what was what was that feeling when you you got home you mm -hmm. got some rest now your peers know that you're back what what was that conversation like with them i mean they all think i'm just crazy so like <laughs> they none of them i think they all think it's really cool what i did yeah. but none of them are like oh yeah some of them are a lot of my friends wanted to go out and do something mm -hmm. like this they were inspired to go out and do a like a small section of a trail but mm -hmm. a lot of them like a couple of them met me at the end of the trail and they're like you you're crazy like <laughs> you're ridiculous my mom thinks my dad and I are crazy for doing stuff like this but I think people definitely see this incredible achievement and are very inspired by it and I think anyone doing something that they're passionate about people some people think it's crazy but I think people see that passion and they get inspired by it. I, I'm inspired. I'm, you know, I'm inspired by what you did because um, some of the things that you said that going through this and you were talking about the mental mm -hmm. aspect of it um, and so much that you learned about yourself and about strength and about mm -hmm. resiliency. So I am really impacted by what you did. I'm very encouraged and it makes me feel like there's things that I, you know, think about doing that now, maybe I want to enter in doing mm -hmm. also. Um, so what schools are you thinking about? I've looked a lot out in Colorado has been my, like I, obviously I really like the outdoors. So the location of Colorado, Colorado Boulder and Denver University have been some of my top choices, but also staying local like uh, BC and UMass Amherst, I've looked at a lot. And honestly, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet, but I think there's just so many great options around here, but also out west. I just love love the mountains, love the outdoors. So that's definitely a draw, and it's definitely calling to okay. me a little bit. Are you? Do you know like what you might want to major in, um, or is that something that you're still thinking about? I my dad is a teacher and my mom's a social worker, so mm -hmm. definitely something in like the humanities education has definitely been very interesting to me so working with other people being able to help other people so sort of what i've been able to do with this but a little bit more interactive with other people has definitely been interesting so stuff like education has been very interesting for me is there any more that you're going to do with the league and your advocacy um, in that area or are there other organizations that you might be thinking about that you might want to partner with um, I'm thinking I'm definitely if I'm able to do another one of these trails or adventures I definitely want to try and use that platform again. I think the Anti-Defamation League, I really like their message. They have a very big following and a lot of people know about them So and they're able to spread that message. And so they were able to take what I said and just broadcast it to a larger audience. And I think I definitely... And, the people working there, they worked with me. They were great people, very, very helpful. They helped me set up all, a lot of stuff. Uh, so I definitely think I'll continue to work with them if I do another one of these trails, if I can. That sounds good. One last question mm -hmm. for you. What are you looking forward to your senior year? <laughs> I'm looking forward to a lot. Um, going back to school, seeing my friends. Um, I'm looking forward to the senior soccer season. So sports, I'm definitely looking forward to that. But also just, I mean, enjoying my last year of high school, enjoy it while I can, but also looking at other future um, endeavors. So mm -hmm. colleges, like you said, mm -hmm. and also maybe planning another trip, like another trail, another adventure. So maybe next summer I'll be able to get out there again and do something like this. Do so you think you can get some of your peers to go with you? I think so. I'm actually in, at school, we're doing a backpacking class. I'm doing it first quarter. So hopefully I'll oh, be able to yep. go on a, a little bit smaller and a yep. less extreme version of this, but definitely yep. be able to get outside, get outdoors with a bunch of my peers. Yeah, Mr. Bruno does that. Yeah, Mr. Like, Bruno. Was mm -hmm. that three days? He does three days, I yeah, think? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. I'm excited for that. Yeah, he's great with mm -hmm. that. Cooper, thank you for coming on yeah, DEI course. Matters. Yeah, thank you I for really me. appreciate it. Your story is so encouraging. I, I am so proud of you. I commend you. you for doing it. And if you do it again, I know people are going to continue to support what you're doing. Um, thank you again. Thank you.
Well, that's it for DEI Matters Conversations with Margaret Carito Thomas, and we hope to see you again.